Hello and welcome to Making Mannequin Heads into Planters. Uh, I think this is episode 40. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I think it is. So um, welcome back and, oh, purple hair. Um, <laughs> that's, so if you see that, it's like, oh, that's not just a trick of the light. It is actually purple. Purple's my color. Um, so like and subscribe and tell all your friends. So this episode is going to be uh, working on, continuing work on this head. So we got the red on a couple episodes ago, and last time I sketched out more of the lines that I want to do now that I know what it's going to be, which is in red, and then I'll do it highlighting, and put on more spikies. And I love the spikes. Those are fun. So what I'm going to do first today is we're going to line this with the uh, multi-grip glue and then I'm going to start painting from back here and you'll see what we'll we'll figure out sort of the evolution of that with metallics or if I'm going to use yellow or um, stay in the reds reds and yellows We've got sort of a yellow blush on his face right now in the front so we'll figure that out but let's jump in I am using I, I get this stuff it's a big old jug of it right and you find it at ocean, this stuff, you actually find it Ocean State Job Lot. Um, just if you have one around you or go online. I don't know if they deliver, but if you can find it, you probably can find it on, you know, some Amazon or something. This stuff is definitely Amazon. Uh, it is not Ocean State Job Lot. Um, but this is awesome because it's thicker. This is the super glue. I won't use the super glue on these. It's overkill, first of all. And I would worry about it actually eating the and um, melting the um, foam on any of that. And it won't stay in place and create the ridges that I want. This has is a thicker viscosity. So I am actually going to pop him onto this handy dandy um, stand. Because putting lines on this way i want to be freeform so i want to sort of have him just where he is right loosen up so i can move him there we go grab him safely pop him on so he has this hole that's built in and this is made for hair mannequins ma makeup mannequin heads um and there we go so i'm going to try to do this so you can see it a little bit better We'll turn it toward you. And when I put this down, I want this to end up being a bead of glue. And it doesn't need to be perfect, but I want it to be thick enough so that it won't, so that it will be above the surface, you know, so that you can actually see it, but not so thick that it's going to either sag, completely sag or drip. So that's the challenge with this glue. I'm gonna get it into there. And I'm doing it so that the tip is at an angle. So whatever angle that can be. And so that I leave glue, whoops, too much of an angle. Yeah, this is the challenge. It's all right, just wanna gladly take it. There we go. The nice thing is with the viscosity of this glue, actually, ooh. for your sake, I'm not moving everything around as much as I would normally would, it, but it does leave a nice bead. I'm going to make this into, they were going to be leaves, but now they're just creepy splotches, but they're still pointed leaf splotches. They're just red. Um, leaf splotches. There we go. Be very careful in the leaf splotches that if you don't have this lying down and you're doing it like I am, to not put on so much that it just drips down the side of the head, like this is doing. Well, how do I fix that? Well, that's easy. Ta-da! Fixed. Paper towel. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to bring these lines in. To, I'm going to take this off. 
Well, actually I can't because then I will be setting it on the spikes. So this is actually okay. I do wish it tilted down more. I know just for the sake of what it is, there's no reason that it would ever tilt down more, but um, for my sake, I wish it did. It should make some sort of a stand for it, but um, I'm toward the end of this series, so I don't think I'll be needing them. So this one, I want to come in and around oh, and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. Come on, give me some glue. This is brilliant to bring it in be after I do <laughs> this. All right, these, I'm going to have to lay it down. Come on, come on. Oh, boing. And I can't lay them down, so I'm going to take them in the head and hold them this way. It doesn't need to be laid up right side up. And I think it's going to be lost if I do them in there. So coming up to them at least is enough. Making sure this is one. I'm going to extend this free form. brings it further forward. It looks like creepy veining. I love that. All right, so those are on. Now, all that glue is set. So I'm going to set it back in here. Go. Makes it so I don't have to worry about them falling over and ruining all of the spikies. And so the spikes can continue drying where they need to. Uh, yep, they're on. Good, 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 good. Excellent. I can always, um, this will keep me from also getting my hands all over the glue that I just did. So let's look at color. I did a sort of a wash of color. I actually want to do more. This is very thin. So I want to do more on the washing of the yellow and I want to do it in the chin area because I didn't do any in the chin area. And is that others? Oh, oh, one of the strings from the glue. And I'm going to do. Oh, come on, Patrick. Oh, good. Well, incredibly enough, that's dry enough already, so that it was not wet on my hand. Even though I just stuck my hand on it, and it was like, oh, gooey glue. I could feel it, but it didn't come off. And all it did was smush it down. It's great stuff. Boy, that is incredible how quickly that starts to dry. So here we go. There's a lot of strings in this area from the glue when you go from one place to another. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. And I just want a light wash of this yellow through here. I don't want it to be yellow yellow. So I'm going to take some off of the highlights with my finger. Tip -toe. There we go. Bring this down a little further on the sides. Blend it out with a drier brush so that it still has that blush of, of green. Of uh, green, of yellow. Sorry. And dry that brush off and just pull some down and in here. That way it also gives us more. Actually, I like that going along the draw. Oh, I don't have that same line over here. It's like, why, why does that look so different? So on this side, I have all these lines, which I may just pull. I like the yellow lower. I'm not gonna pull it out. I will pull it down around the side there. You see where I'm going with it? Around the chin. A little bit in here. Since I've got this great veining that continues on this side, it's going to be different from the other side. Where I'm not sure where I'm going with that yet, but at least I can bring this real light, 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 light sort of blush of yellow. Because it picks it up, because it is textured, because I used, so the, the, if you haven't seen previous episodes, the way that I created the base coat for this, this bronzy color, is I used fleck stone paint. Um, which is, it 
sort of spurts out a whole bunch of chunks of paint that, and this stuff is not, it's not waterproof by any means. Like you put water on it after it's dry and it just dissolves. But I flex stoned it, let that dry, and then I took the bronze paint and painted over that lightly. Um, and so you can see the flex stone still through it and you can see the texture underneath it, which I really like, and especially while I'm painting on it because when I use the glue, it comes up as a little chunky underneath in places and then super smooth in others, but it brings that texture to it instead of it just being a flat rubber plastic um, texture. And with the paint, when the paint goes on, especially thin like this, it's going to pick up that texture as well. And I like the texture. I want that texture really be coming out from underneath. And the way you can do that is, is this sort of washing of color will pick up that texture significantly. As you can see, I'll bring it closer to you. Let's make sure I don't get my fingers all in the glue that I just put down. As you can see, it's rough. And that's exactly what I want. I don't want it smooth. I want it other, um, which makes it just that much more interesting and fun. So the question now is, do I continue this yellow blush up? Yes. I think that's going to be a yes answer. Uh, I am going to, like I said, put more paint down. Yeah, it's so thin. Yeah, so this was a container of yellow, apparently, that at one point I just watered it down. Um, it was a total surprise when I went to use it last, I think it was the last episode or two episodes ago. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is very sloshy. So I'm going to do a different color. I'm going to leave it a different color underneath the spikes so we understand that there's sort of two things going on here with the face because I've got these two worlds of, of um, texture going on. I've got the swirls, the red swirls, and then I've got the, um, the spikies. And the spikes I'm gonna leave with the bronze at the base, but I will paint the actual spikes. I, that I do know I'm going to do. And as you know, I sort of go on the fly, which is the way I like to work. You can do some planning, but um, once you actually see it, then you go, oh, yes, that is how I'm going to do that. So now we're gonna blend the two worlds together a little bit, bring the yellow in just a little bit around the base of these, because it is around the eye here. And I'll do this because we are transitioning from the veins or whatever they are from the the red to the spikes there we go and that brings it all together a little bit better a little bit more on here originally i was not taking it as low but i do like it to highlight there we go there oh i like that yes 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 so I'm gonna do that actually under the chin as well. Give us more contrast. Ooh, I love that. That brings it right out. I'll show you in just a second here. So now that I've committed to where I have red, I'm, I will have yellow, because they're nice contrasting colors, or complementary colors. They're complementary, right? Yeah, yellow is across from red. And there we go. There it is. So just brought it down and around the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend that out. As it dries, it'll become more a little bit more opaque. And that is cool. Right. So it's just that bit of yellow. Do you see that difference? That gives us a different texture on the face. There we go. Bring this around up and through here. And among all of the, whatever they are, 
they're ending up being. Now I'm going to use one more color, just so you know, one or two, I'm not really sure. Um, it's like, how far do I go into? Probably just one more color uh, on the actual red to give it more dyna dynamism, dynamic, more dynamic, to give it more depth. And um, so it's more interesting when you look at it than just, oh, those are plastic lines. Um, and that's just for my sake. Other people might, you know, not really register that I've done it. But in my eye, it's like, oh, that begs more. But I do like just this yellow as the background to get through here. Um, what I may do, you know, now that I'm talking about it and thinking about it, is what would be kind of cool would be bring some metallic onto the red. That could work well, don't you think? Definitely a good possibility. Oh, and I need to do these veins as red once they dry. So I'm not going to go too far with this yellow right now. I can always add to it later, bring more, but I love where this is going, especially since we have that base coat of the bronze, the total bronze, uh, underneath the spikes, it'll automatically have that. This is a different part of, of the head and this is looking different. There we go. So I'm gonna stay away from the new glue, even though it is tacky um and not wet and, but i'm gonna at least get this this is cool i like it it really makes that red come out more it gives more uh a less even tone and brings out also visually brings out the texture that is the that was the first coat of paint on this whole head. There we go. Now the brush I'm using is a small brush that has, see it's short, little guy, but it has this great sharp edge to it. I believe this is an acrylic brush because it handles acrylic paint really well. It's synthetic and as I've mentioned in other, other episodes, I do prefer synthetic brushes when I'm doing work like this, work, when I'm playing like this, um, with acrylic paint. It allows me to hold more paint uh, in a smoother way. So if that's too heavy, push that paint out. Um, but I'm able to better use acrylic because it doesn't dig down um, through. It's, it's a smoother application of the paint, um, which is what I want right now. Now, the beauty of it is, and I've mentioned this before, but in case you didn't see those, um, is that I've mentioned that the different brushes that you use, I'm gonna do a larger brush for application down the throat, uh, the different brushes you use actually give you a different texture or a different application. So you can use your brush. What happened in here? Oh, that's just the end of code. Um, to just the brush type to have different effects of the paint. So it can be put on smoothly. It can be put on rough. Um, you could scrape. Like I was talking about, you can actually, while you're using a brush that's um, hard bristle, like they've got hard bristle, soft bristle, all of those things, synthetic bristle, natural bristle, um, those have different sort of functions that you can, once you get comfortable with them, this is actually going on just fine around the new glue. It's dried enough. Uh, you can use them to your advantage. So if you want to be having a, you know, showing an undersurface, so if you're working on canvas, as a as an example, as a simple common example, and you have a canvas that you're using that you're painting on, 
and you want the texture of that canvas to go away. Like you don't want that weave, that woven texture of canvas to be seen or felt underneath sort of coming through because it will tend to come through, especially with acrylics. Uh, depending on how much you layer the acrylic. But you can do that with a brush as well by using a much smoother brush. Then you can then, when you're putting the paint on heavier, you're not dragging the paint off of the canvas as at the same time as putting it on. Now by that I mean a rougher, it'll be like putting paint on with this. So I'm t putting it on where I'm not touching I'm leaving it there, but where my fingers are touching the canvas is dragging it off, right? Well, natural bristle, harder natural bristle, rougher natural bristle brushes do that, and um, they pull it back off. Or if you've got a nice, really thick paint, it's not going to do that. You you have something to ride with. But with acrylics, um, you, you know, you got to really have a thick paint to be able to leave all that paint behind and use a, a, a rough, um, a harder firmer brush. So if you want that smoothness to stay or to, to have a smoother finish, you use a smoother brush and you put it on very lightly. You don't press down really hard. Um, and what it'll do is like, well, all I did there to have more paint on was I used actually, oddly enough, not a harder hand, not a heavier hand, but a lighter hand. Um, and then if I want to drag it off, I will actually literally scoop it off and bring it somewhere else. And um, so that's how you use brushes. It's one, I mean, it's real fundamental, like brush 001. Um, but it is, it's, you know, something to, to think about and play with is, all right, what kind of brushes do I have? Um, well, you can get brush packs very easily at, at different places. Um, depending on you know what what where you shop and things like that you can actually get them at walmart you can get them at target and you can get brush packs and they'll be you know a pack of 10 brushes and they'll be different angled brushes different size brushes different weights of brushes and you know you can pick the the batch of them that you want that's a, acrylic brushes or oil brushes they'll have different length of um, handles as well which is kind of nice uh, depending on what you're working on as to what the length of the handle, it, it sometimes matters. If you want to stay far away from your the whatever you're painting on, the longer the handle of the brush, the better off you are. Um, and then if you're doing super fine detail work, some people prefer, there's no right or wrong to it, I don't think. Um, not in my world. I, mine is the do what works, that's the right or wrong. Uh, if you're trying to fit into somebody else's mold or, you know, this is the way it's done. Well, you know, that person needs to really think and rethink it because there's not just one in art, especially there's such an open. That's what I like about it is like you can figure stuff out along the way and it's like, oh, it's magic for you. Somebody else does it's a complete like gets the same effect. So I've got too much paint on here. All I'm doing is taking some of the paint off. It's getting too heavy handed because I'm getting excited about what I'm talking about. I want it to be more of a blush. There we go. That's cool. Um, so, you know, there isn't just one way or the highway with, with art, first of all, just generally. Um, there's also not just one way or the highway for how you create things, how you use medium. That's the cool thing is that if you can like not be strict with how you use, you know, what medium you use. So like with this as an example, or what, you know, what, what you use for what, I guess is really what I'm coming down to. So for this, I started with, with spray paint. And then instead of just leaving it as I spray painted them, they are done. I then come in with acrylic. Who does that? That's just crazy pants talking right there, right? Um, who's going from one type of paint to another? Well, I am because the, there we go, cool. The spray paint's only gonna do part of what I want to actually do. It's not going to get everything done for me. 
Therefore, I can use it for the base. I can use it. I could do an overspray on this and speckle. And um, as you saw on the, the head with the braids, uh, if you look at those episodes, you'll see a totally different use of the paint where I put it on so heavy that it, it um, sagged and um, dripped. And that was one of the most beautiful parts, or that is one of the most beautiful parts of that head is that she's got these gorgeous interactions of these colors that are just these blues and teals and and that they work together to create other colors because they drip into one another. There we go. This is the last one for veins. All right. This is cool. So don't, you know, there isn't just the, oh, this is supposed to be used for this. Yeah, well, not that does not, that does not even remotely like resonate um, in art. So one of the brilliant things that um, that one of our local artists who Lee Lee takes lessons with her or takes classes with her, and she's all about and she's totally on the same page. Diane uh, is totally on the same page as this. Uh, one of the things that I think is brilliant for her, I never would have thought of it. I don't know where she she figured it out or somebody told her. Or I don't know where it came from, but it's, it is absolutely, in my book, it's absolutely brilliant. Was that when you have extra paint left over, you never waste your paint. Right? So, I mean, it is like tragic. You're like, I paid for this paint and now it's going to dry and I have no use for it. What else can I do? Well, her answer is a brilliant one. You make, because she does a lot of paper, work with paper. And Lee um, does really brilliant work with, I mean, he's got just, just some like crazy cool eye for working with paper and cutting paper and, and stuff like this. And she's been fabulous with him. Or they, they sort of jive well. Um, Yes, I said the word jive, I know. Um, but they work well together. They, he learns well from her because she's just like, you know, and this was a total mind blown moment when he, he told me about this. He's like, well, Diane said, when you have extra paint, make your own paper, colored papers. Use them on, and just like totally free, just like put that paint onto paper because you're cutting papers and what you do is you start making your own papers for for that. So you're making, you're using something that you would normally have thrown away that is discarded, you know, in, in sort of in your eyes, you've been told, oh, that's extra, so you're not gonna use it. And she went instead to the place of, how can I use this? I don't want to waste it. What can it be used for? And the papers that he makes are just kind of splotchy, you know, like, you know, paint on paper. But what's cool is that he then uses them in his pieces. And those are some of the most unique papers because you can buy all these papers that are pre-printed and pre-colored and everything. And what this, what happens with that is then it becomes these wonderful unique papers that are not store-bought and then you use them in your art and your art sort of expands or it grows it it evolves to a different level of something of something else because you can be doing the same thing but you created all of it it's not you taking somebody else's paper which is totally viable and doing this but instead using the paper that you created I mean, you're not like making paper but you're coloring paper so the colors that you created by your own hand you own them a little bit more therefore when you use them you will use them a little differently um, because they're different from all the rest you don't have any repeats ever of paper that you made when you use old paint or inks. There. Yeah. So, ta-da. I'm going to go around and just highlight 
the edges here a little bit more, give a little bit more contrast, and then I'll go over with the red. Yep. Yeah. All right, cool. So that's it for today. And for this episode, I hope you learned something or saw something interesting that you can use in your own art or you were inspired. And oh God, I just broke the end of my brush by being too manly or too, that was a weird statement, manly? No, by being too strong, too hard handed. There we go. Ooh, there's a psychological thing to look into for me. Is manly hard handed? <laughs> anyway. Oh, how we use terms is always so interesting it, to reveal what, what our, our concepts are, what our ideas are. I love words. So put love out there, right? There's not enough love in the world. And I can't say that enough times. Let yourself make mistakes. Be a little less critical of yourself and of others. Take that breath and release it and then respond. Um, not always easy. Uh, never easy, especially in the moment. Are you kidding? It's not, I, I don't mean that it's going to be like, oh yeah, I just do that automatically. No, but with practice, it gets easier. Um, and, it get, and you get better at it. But you'll never get better at it if you don't practice. That's the voice teacher in me coming out. Have a wonderful day. Put love out there. Love yourself. Give yourself space. And have fun. All right. I will see you in the next episode. Bum, bum, bum. I have no idea what we'll be, where, where we'll be going with this one. Um, it's got to sort of machinate in my brain. All right. See you later. Bye.